This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. So having gone through and looked at the accounting treatment in the previous video in relation to the lease of short life and low value assets, which I think you could agree, the accounting treatment there was, was, was relatively straightforward, nothing too crazy in regards to computations. We now move on to look at how we treat the rest of our leases. And the rest of our leases are treated by recognizing an asset on the statement of financial position alongside a corresponding liability to reduce that impact of off balance sheet finance. So just some minor points to pick up before we get involved in any detailed questions afterwards. Uh, note the asset that you recognize within your non-current asset is referred to as a right of use asset to try and distinguish it from all the other types of asset that you have, which you legally own as part of, say, property, plant and equipment. You don't own this asset. You just have a right to use it for a fixed period of time. And then don't forget as well, there is a lease liability and your liabilities, remember, are split into current and non-current. So we'll also need to look at not only how do we calculate the value of that liability, but also look at how we split it into a current and non-current element. The right of use asset itself just sits there within a non-current asset. So what do we have? Well, I'd first of all look at the lease liability. And I think I've probably gone into a bit too much detail for, for this level. So I'll just pick out the important parts. So with the lease liability, you work out the present value. So a little bit of discounting is required uh, of the lease payments over the lease term. So you just look at the payments. So you've got a payment in your one, two, three, four, five. You then discount them back to present value. Very simple discounting techniques. And a lot of the time you'll find that you'll be given uh, the present value of those lease payments. Again, specifics, uh, you discount those future lease payments at the rate implicit in the lease. So again, you're going to be given that question. You're never going to be asked to calculate the rate implicit in the lease. You just need to go through there and use the figure given 5%, 10%, whatever it may be. Uh, just be careful though with those lease payments. Because remember, when we're thinking about the lease payments, they are either going to be made in advance or in arrears. And that's going to have a big impact in terms of any discounting that is done. So you'll note that within the questions as you work through them and whether or not they're in advance or in arrears, because that will impact the discounting itself. But if you're given the present value minimum lease payments, we don't need to worry, do we? Uh, so you look at what the present value of the minimum lease payments are. Uh, the only real one that, that we need to look at is the top one, okay? Uh, the others are all part of IFRS 16, so you do include any variable payments that, that you're going to make. Uh, you do look at if you have to pay any residual value guarantee at the end, so guaranteeing what the asset is going to be worth at the end of its lease period. Uh, again, you include the penalty for terminating if it's reasonably certain that you will terminate it or probable. Uh, again, not likely here. And then if there's an option to purchase it at the end, again, that will be included. Again, you see these keywords, reasonably certain. Okay, but for you and I, we're looking at the fixed payments that you make, uh, less any incentives, and you discount them back to present value. Again, there's just a small point just to note just at the side. Uh, if you can't find or can't calculate the rate implicit in the lease, then you go through and use the company's incremental borrowing rate, similar to your, your cost of capital, your, your cost of debt, if you like. Uh, so once you've got that lease liability, that lease liability is then what you start off with, with regards to the value of the assets. So you've got the lease liability. You then recognize the same amount as the value of the right of use asset. And then you will add on any direct costs that are incurred by yourself as the lessee. So there may be some delivery costs, maybe some installation costs. You add them on as part of the right of use assets. 
Again, there are other issues to take account of, but again, the dismantling, uh, any payments, less lease incentives before the commencement date of when you use the lease or when you use the asset. No, 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 no. I'm, I'm not too worried about those. The value of the right of use asset is the lease liability and any initial direct costs. That's it. Okay. Brilliant. What you then need to go through and do is that's looking at it from the SFP perspective. Again, you then need to depreciate the value of that asset. And then you have a financial liability at amortized cost. We haven't touched amortized cost. That just sounds way fancy, sounds crazy. We touch upon that in financial instruments within F2. Effectively, what we have on that financial liability is that each year that reduces, doesn't it? Because of any payments that we make, but also... We need to show the interest and that interest goes on the statement of profit or loss. So this funky name of amortized cost is effectively saying, look, can we reduce the value of the liability by the payments that are made? And can we charge interest on the value of the outstanding liability? You know what the world's like. It's crazy. So we call that the amortized cost method. Doesn't matter. Again, if we go back to the right of use asset. Minor point just to note, I suppose the, the exam questions could try and catch you out on this. Uh, you depreciate it based upon uh, the earlier, so whichever is shorter of the useful life and the lease term. So if you've got an asset and the lease term is five years, but it only has a useful life of four you don't depreciate it over the five year lease term. You just depreciate it over the four because that's when you get the benefit from using it, isn't it? You get the benefit from using it over its useful life. OK, again, small picky points. Be aware, just in case uh, if ownership does transfer at the end, uh, then you will use uh, the useful life. OK, uh, there we go. Minor point, let's not worry too much about it. And the key bit is the depreciation is over the earlier or the shorter of the useful life and the lease term. Excellent. There we go. So just make sure you go back, have a look through the notes there in terms of initial recognition. Make sure you're happy there. Make sure that you look at the subsequent measurement as well, because what we're going to go through and do in the next video is have a look at a detailed example. I'll see you all shortly. Before then, Get yourself a bite to eat uh, and maybe a cup of tea or a cup of coffee and I'll see you soon.